Warning, the video you're about to watch contains mathematics at the level of integral calculus, also known as Calc 2. All material has an assumed prerequisite of differential calculus and a full semester course in trigonometry. A thorough review of prerequisite topics can be found by searching the web. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook over. Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is for integral calculus students who are going through integration techniques right now and who are kind of at the end of integration techniques. And I'm not saying end of the entire chapter on integration techniques, but the end of the basic integration techniques. So you need not know about numerical integration techniques or improper integrals at this point, but You've just finished maybe partial fraction decomposition, uh, by parts integration, trig subs, specialized U substitutions, all that fun stuff. And you're faced with an integral like this. This is a very special integral that is commonly thrown in to a bucket of practice problems or maybe exam problems. And it's put there it's because it's somewhat advanced. A lot of students kind of struggle with this concept, so I thought I'd make a video on it. Although I think I actually have a video on something very similar in my video sets, but I'm just doing this for a lecture for students in my class, so I might as well produce this for the entire internet. Facing this integral here, we go to our list of integration techniques. Obviously, you can't directly integrate this, so I'm just gonna cross that out. Then you look at all your U substitution techniques. Actually, maybe I should go down to the bottom and just say, it's definitely not a ratio of polynomials and it's definitely not the product of different types of functions. So I can throw those two out. It's also not a sum or a difference of squares and it's not a product of trig functions. See how quickly we get down to a couple of methods. That's important that you're able to do that quickly. And these last two, a standard U sub or a radical substitution, they're kind of the same in my head. They just are the same action. You're just doing a substitution. But what is your substitution here? Well, let me start by saying when you're faced with an integral that has a sum or a difference or something like that of radical expressions in the denominator, it is often to your benefit to rewrite those expressions in the denominator with rational exponents. So that's what I'm gonna do here. As I commonly state, you should do your arithmetic before your algebra, your algebra before your trig, your trig before your pre-calculus, and your pre-calculus before your calculus. And so we have exercised a little bit of algebra. Now I'm actually gonna exercise a little bit of arithmetic, believe it or not. I want these two exponents to have the same denominator, so I'm gonna write that 1 fourth as a 2 eighths. The reason why I'm doing that is because of algebra that we've learned in the past. In the past, when we have dealt with algebra and we dealt with maybe a, an expression of the form that you see here, we were asked to factor. And when you factor expressions like that, you factor off the lowest powered version of x. And the lowest powered version of x in this expression is the 2 eighths power. So remember, factoring from algebra is the same thing as division. So I'm gonna pull an x to the 2 eighths off of both of those terms. Remember, it's just dividing off an x to the 2 eighths off of this, so that will become a one. And you'll be dividing x to the 2 eighths off of this, so that'll be an x to the 1 eighths. And you stare at this for a moment and you say, well, that's no better. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to do with that. That's fine. This is actually in a form where three different substitutions are perfectly fine. So no matter what you do, well, I shouldn't say no matter what you do here, but you can go three different directions and still get to the answer. I'm going to show you the fastest choice. So again, you're running up this path going this direction and all of a sudden somebody says, oh, you have three paths branching out before you. Which path do you take, right? All three, I promise you, will lead to the same answer. So they'll all lead to the same spot. This is your goal right here. I promise they'll all three lead there. But you wanna make the choice that is really the fastest. 
And that choice is actually by allowing you to either equal x to the 1 8th or to equal x to the 1 8th minus 1. It's actually your choice. I would probably just do u equals x to the 1 8th, but x to the 1 8th minus 1 works just as nicely. Actually, now that I just said that out loud, no, it doesn't work just as nicely. It works, just not as nicely. Really, the best choice is x to the 1 8th. And the reason why will become apparent after we make the substitution. So let's begin that substitution first, and then I'll talk to you about why that's a good choice. Well, if u is equal to x to the 1 8th, then du is equal to 1 8th x to the subtract 1 from that exponent, so you get a negative 7 eighths. And you say, ugh, I don't have an x to the negative 7 eighths to steal. Well, such is life. Multiply both sides of this equation by 8 and by x to the 7 eighths, and you'll get the following. And for right now, I will just substitute all of that in, and then we'll talk about why it was such a good substitution. So the dx upstairs is going to be traded out for an 8x to the 7 eighths du. The x to the 2 eighths downstairs I'll leave for a moment. And then we know x to the 1 eighth is u. And you stare at that for a second and you say, oh, well, I can cancel the x to the 2 eighths with the x to the 7 eighths upstairs. You sure can. Go ahead and do it. But then you stare at this and you say, but that's x to the 5 eighths. And I don't have anything written as x to the 5 eighths. But this is why we made our substitution u is equal to x to the 1 eighth. Because if you raise both sides to any power, let's say you had in the end there an x to the 3 eighths, I would just raise both sides to the three, third power. In this case, I have an x to the 5 eighths, so I'll raise both sides of this to the fifth power. So I know x to the 5 eighths is u to the fifth, I'll substitute that in. That's why allowing u to equal x to the 1 eighth is a great substitution because no matter what we have in terms of x in the future, it'll always be written in terms of eighths. I promise you, it'll be a 3 eighths, a 5 eighths, a 7 eighths, a, a negative 7 eighths, whatever it is, I can derive that from just a single equation. If it was x to the negative 7 eighths, then I'd raise both sides to the negative 7th power. I'd say u to the negative 7th is x to the negative 7 over 8. So that is why we make that choice. Now at this point right here, you can do a couple of different things. So let me give you the visual of it. We've actually chosen the branch that goes directly there. So we're actually running up this direction right here. But there's a little split in the road, just a minor split actually. And we have a couple of choices we can make there to get to our goal. One choice is to do long division right now and then integrate. That's actually kind of fun. I actually appreciate that. Or you could do a u substitution. And since u is being used, we could do a v substitution. I will actually show both of those paths because I need you, even if you're not my student, if you're one of the thousands of students out there that watch these videos, I need you to understand that you have options and having options and experimenting with those options is incredibly important in Calc 2. So like I said, there's one option, you could do a V substitution. You can say, I'm gonna let V equal that denominator U minus one. Well, DV would therefore be DU, but V plus one can be traded out whenever I see a U. In that case, our integral will become eight integral of instead of u to the fifth it would be v plus one to the fifth instead of a du it would be a dv and downstairs that would just be a v and you would multiply out that numerator and i highly recommend using pascal's triangle for that so that you have eight times the integral v to the fifth five v to the fourth plus 10 v to the third plus 10 v squared plus 5 v plus 1 all over v you can do that division by v very quickly and now you can integrate that whole thing you have a natural log at the end obviously absolute value of v and you'd resubstitute and you get some answer the other option which i think is kind of a cool option is to practice a little bit of arithmetic before you go through all that do long division and in fact since it's just u minus one 
and you have pre-calculus as a prerequisite for your calculus, which is a prerequisite for Calc 1 or Calc 2, you can use synthetic division. If you don't know synthetic division, do long division. I don't care. Or watch one of my videos on synthetic division. And what you know, if you know about synthetic division, is that this is the remainder and these are the coefficients of the power of u starting at u to the fourth. So this would equal eight times the integral of u to the fourth from this guy right here, one u to the fourth, plus one u to the third, plus one u squared, plus one u, plus one, plus the remainder over the divisor. The remainder is one, the divisor is actually the u minus one. And you can see that's actually pretty fast, right? I didn't need Pascal's triangle or anything like that. And this would be eight times, well, actually, I, I'll leave it up to you. You can actually integrate the rest of this. That's uh, one fifth u to the fifth and one uh, fourth u to the fourth and so on and so forth. Remember in the end to resubstitute in x to the one eighth for u. Heck, I could probably do it actually. Let me go ahead and do it. So that would be eight times There we go. So that's what it would turn out to be. I just integrated each of these terms and substituted in X to the one eighth. And that's what we get. So two options, and those are just two options for the main path to get to the goal, but there were actually another two methods that you could have gone through had you taken other choices for your initial U substitution. Some people will allow X to the one eighth minus one. If you do that, you might get partial fraction decomposition. Some people will let u equal x to the 2 eighths. If you do that, you have a little extra work, but it still can be done. So I guess the most important piece of advice with this is do some algebra and factor first. If you factor first, then you can see some options. I always recommend letting u equal the base power, x to the 1 eighth basically the lowest power of X that you see within that integrand. All right, I know that I didn't actually complete out the other pathways, and I hope that doesn't bother you. I think it's best that you actually explore those on your own, and uh, you already know what the answer is gonna be. It's this piece right here. I didn't actually pre-work this problem, so if I made a mistake, I apologize, but I probably didn't on this one. So anyhow, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope this video helped you and uh, be a good human. It's the system of equations. We must deal with them all at once. Always looking for solutions. Positive outlook overcomes. Obstacles getting in our way comes. Effects more than we can sometimes see. Things for what they are and work together until you feel at peace. Listen close. Too much that isn't cold Sure, you may really hurt inside It doesn't justify you to speak too loud and cry